Who's a birth support person? Well, it's changed. When these skills started to develop in the early 1970s, I gave birth in 1970 in the US, and it was husbands. Husbands, couples, went to the first ever childbirth preparation classes, which were all skills-based, Lamaze and the Bradley Method, which was called Husband Coach Childbirth. We'd been left alone in birth for the generation before us. And I'm not gonna get into discussion about how different cultures do birth. We are where we are and modern countries after Second World War started to do something different than they had done before because the medical profession became more sophisticated. And women wanted to have somebody with them to help them work through labor because in 1970 there was only 4.5% cesarean rate. 95% of us labored, whether it was easy or horrible, whether it was short or went on for days, whether we had a good outcome, or whether we had a tragic outcome, whether we had risks involved in birth or not. The cesarean was done to save our life as mothers. Baby died, there was very little birth control. It was just assumed we'd uh, have more kids. So the birth coach back then was called a birth coach and there was a very strong societal expectation that our husbands could help us cope with the natural occurring pain of labor. And they did, they were brilliant at it. The skills weren't particularly good. Bradley and Lamaze, that was the beginning of skills. Birthing better was an evolution of skills. Because one is it focused on all births, not just low risk women, including cesareans. And it was all developed by mothers and fathers rather than an obstetrician or somebody who had a particular viewpoint about childbirth. So you are now being told to be a support. That occurred in the 1980s. The natural birth movement actively discouraged fathers from coaching. They said, fathers shouldn't be coaching women. Women don't need to be coached. It's instinctive. Women know what to do. They need to be left alone to birth by themselves. So they should just support women's choices and protect the sacred space of birth, which is absolutely dingy. I mean, I'm sorry, but what's the sacred space of birth exactly? I mean, do women in war have a sacred space? What about famine? What about if they come from an abused family or an unhappy family? If you go into the hospital, that's not a sacred space. It's a medical facility, and it's their facility, not your facility. If you're at home and you imagine the cartoon in your head as to what a father's doing, looking out away from you while he sort of has his arms out to here going, don't get near her, don't get near her. That's not what we want as women. We want them to turn towards us and help us cope, help us manage. So when we change from coach to support, fathers stop knowing what to do. And this course is all about both of you knowing what to do because fathers and mothers equally developed the skills. If you're a woman who's helping another woman, relative or a friend, great. If you don't have a support person, great. If you're working with a doula, Everybody learn the skills. If you're birthing on your own and don't have anybody, teach the care providers, the staff, they'll help you. This is a no brainer. If you need help, show people how to help you. Don't expect them to know. And that goes for your, your birth coach. You, you shouldn't be expected to know how to help the birthing woman. It's teamwork and it involves a lot of communication. So in this lesson, you're going to learn how to be an effective birth coach, and you're going to have the birthing woman help you do that, because without her help, verbal and nonverbal communication, you don't always know what to do, and she wants you to know what to do. So we'll teach you how.